Please note that though this is a spoiler-free review of the subject, I do spoil the series and or franchise leading up to this particular entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Blade Runner 2049. Take two, because for some reason it didn't record. That's only half an hour of my life, I'll never get back. And I didn't get into any of the, as much of any of the stuff that I was super passionate about, about the movie, so here we go. BR249, or to foot nine, directed by Denny Villeneuve, which makes the film Denny's. And note, I am spoiling both the first film and the book itself. Plot. Now, a young Blade Runner's discovery of a long buried secret leads him on a quest. That's all I'm gonna get. And it's this new Blade Runner, LAPD Officer K, or Lapdog for short. Shorter. K, like Philip K. Dick, I guess. Like how Sarah Connor Chronicles had characters named Cameron and Harlan. I like that. Notes taken while viewing. I'm not going to do much of any of those. To briefly get, I watched this in 2D, not 3D. They removed 3D screens from my cinema. I won't give them way much plot since it's really spoilery. Not much of any thing will I give away in this. I do not watch the prequel films with the logic that I shouldn't have to in order to follow this. Some say it's too long and has bad pacing. It's long, not too long, and the pacing is sometimes... Some scenes go on for longer than you might expect them to, but no scene goes on for too long. Yeah. There's almost nothing I can say about this movie that isn't spoilery, so just... It's not an action movie. It's thinky sci-fi with a few action scenes. Those action scenes are great, but do not go into watching this two hour, 33 minute movie expecting an action movie. That's why some people say they were bored. That and they, I'm sorry, they didn't get it. Like they said in the midnight screens. I, I don't understand how, you know, including professional critics, just some of them clearly didn't get it. But anyway, yeah, I, you know, if, if joy doesn't break your heart, I would urge you to get an EKG because your heart might have already stopped beating. The The scope is fantastic. It's gorgeously shot. The The sound work is amazing from the score. The characters are compelling. It's incredible exploration of these themes, some of which were started in the original and it builds beautifully onto them. The the mystery is really compelling and drives the plot very nicely. I think that's... yeah. So, moving on to on plot. So, yeah. In this one, there's a conspiracy, which, to be fair, is a frequent theme in Philip K. Dick. And the good guys are being chased. Well, you know, and, and, again, before I watched it, I was like, this might be a really bad thing, but it's a good way to not just... If this movie had literally just been a young, cynical Blade Runner hunts down and retires a handful of, you know, of, of replicants, that would have been completely wrong. That works beautifully for the first one. You know, big part of what works so well in both the book and the original is, you know, and by when I say book, I mean, you know, Philip K. Dick's original. I have not read The Edge of Human. You know, it's, there's this straightforward plot. Bounty Hunter hunts down 
you know, several androids who have killed people. You, know, you could, the, the movie could have been a western or like a noir movie and yeah, both are very clearly intentional and yeah, it's, it's really, where it gets complex is the characters and their interactions, the world concept, the themes explored and yeah, you could not make as simple of a movie again. It just would not work. It works as an introduction. And, you know, this is much bigger budget, and some of it is more like good versus evil, where the original is more murky, but it's still, you know, not glamorous, not classic hero. This one does have decided villains, like characters who know what they're doing hurts others, and they're doing it. Yeah, you know, they're, they're not cardboard cutouts, but they are villains, but they're compelling villains. And I'm not going to detail them before the spoiler segment. But yeah, you know, the original is just these... They, they don't want to be slaves. That's, that's it, you know. The book opens with him arguing with the wife that the original movie doesn't have, in part because it makes the relationship with Rachel cheating, over the morality of Bounty Hunting. And in preparation for this review, I rewatched The Believer, the, you know, final cut version of Blade Runner. I, I think I've also watched the director's cut. That, you know, watched that one back in 2005, hadn't watched it between the, yeah, since then. Otherwise, rewatched the South Park self-aware ad storyline, so all of season 19. And I maintain that's a really great riff on this, but, you know, this also does do really beautifully on that. You know, rewatch the relevant Renegade Cut videos, you know, the, the one on the original Blade Runner, the, the ones on the other Denny movies. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to try really hard not to butcher Denny's name, because I now have a ton of respect for the guy. And I might watch the other movies he's done. This is the first one I watched, and it's not that the others didn't look good. But yeah, we watched Total Recall, Minority Report. I didn't rewatch it recently, but I have watched Paycheck once. Rewatched The Scanner Darkly, which is the only Richard Linklater film I've watched. Again, not that the others don't look interesting. Next, The Adjustment Bureau. I still absolutely love the, that movie. You know, if Superpowers carried over, that movie would be Howard Stark, Falcon, and Zod and or Jor-El versus Jason Bourne and Rita Vertosky. And hey, depending on when in the film you go by, Freya can summon Thor. And Blunt was almost Black Widow or Peggy, Peggy Carter, and she could easily play the sister of Fiona Glenan. Oh, and they've done other stuff, but those are the roles I connect them to in my mind. But calling it, say, Bourne meets Inception would, of course, be ridiculous and do a disservice to all three films total film. That movie legitimately has Matt Damon selling Saw Pals. The I rewatched the Total Recall remake. You know, after the bank scene, Doug really should have money coming out his ass. You know, more than challenging the notion of what's real and what isn't, that movie challenges the idea of bullets ever hitting protagonists no matter how much they should realistically be able to. Seriously, even by action flick standards, it's ridiculous. I think Kurt Wimmer maybe wrote the action scenes, and if he had gotten to film them too, it would have been a lot more compelling. Doug shooting guards in Recall is very Wimmer, and the rest of it, as Film Brain points out, there's an obsession with going up or down, moving in a vehicle or elevator. Wimmer tends to obsess over one or more things in action scenes, so mostly it's gun cotton, outnumbered but wins. And I do still really appreciate the class awareness, which comes through stronger than the original. It's one of the few remakes, of, the few positives of the remake. I reread the book for a second time, first time in years upon years, a few months back. And let's see. This is still a good example of cyberpunk. And it's not mimicking the original too much. It's it references and riffs, but not yeah. And again, it, it would not have worked if it just did that. And like the original, it uses religious symbolism, philosophy, and metaphor. And Denise's movie, other movies, according to Renegade Cut, who I trust outside of what he said on American Psycho, a lot of what he said in that video is still good, but some of it, yeah. You know, 
the, the needs on the roads are morality about using violence and that, that is ever justified how some people or governments justify it identity when faced with something that seems to threaten our identity dictatorships whether macro or micro and yeah that works here I have to commend whoever to picture Denny doing this movie and I'm really glad he agreed to it I, I read that he didn't do so easily and I can totally believe that he was a perfect fit for it and I'm sorry Ridley Scott of today would not have been able to make a good sequel to the movie not based on you know Alien Covenant I think it's called and Prometheus and reviews I've seen of the other recent movies he's made. I, I don't know what happened to him. He lost his mojo. Denis is overflowing with mojo. Now, there there are parts of this where we have this very sandy, post-apocalyptic, Mad Maxi future, and, you know, in the first you only see the perpetually rainy and dark, crowded cityscape which has been imitated countless times since that is in this but we also we visit a few other places but you know yeah the fact that Fury Road did well is probably why we have the sandy stuff and like in the original in the book Earth is still deteriorating many people moving to off world colonies but not everyone being able to and yeah in the long awaited sequel a young person who is in a similar situation to the one he was in comes to Harrison Ford who's retired and or goes on a search for a character that's been missing that's becoming a trend and not only for Ford you know the IMDB trivia I think was already pointed out that that's kind of the thing in Tron as well yeah and that is pretty much it and yeah, this explores class. And it's an R rating and uses that right. I'm not going to give away how. The writers are Hampton Fancher, who wrote the original and almost nothing else, and Michael Green, who wrote Logan, but also Green Lantern and Alien Covenant. Brad Jones points out, I think, in a minute screening, that the original is world building, atmospheric movie. That's still the case here. And Renegade points out that the original does not end with the good guys overthrowing the awful system. So many other movies, including Philip K. Dick adaptations, do, including Augie, it, it centerizes that as well, the original Total Recall. So I ran a Microsoft Security Essentials scan on a laptop that hadn't had it run in ages. First time I used that program in ages as well. I really think there should be a detailed prompt for stuff like that when you're deciding which scan intensity to run. You know, Yo, seriously, dude, if you're on a complete scan, it will take over 9 hours, even though you only use 41 gigabytes on your hard drive. No, really. Meanwhile, the quick scan takes just over one and a half minutes. Jane just pointed out how crazy some of the Republicans, including Congress, are. The crazies are coming from inside the House of Congress. So, another day, another mass shooting. Why is this one even being reported? Because 58 people were killed and 489 injured. He was hoping it will lead to sensible gun control, though I doubt it. No, not banning guns. Stop pretending that's what we're asking for. Characters. Ryan Gosling. Gosling. Except for the Believer and possibly Goosebumps, say cheese and die. I know I read the book. I read a bunch of Goosebumps, even though it never it was never really for me. Too restrained, not willing to go dark enough, in my opinion. Yeah. And the first thing I see Ryan Gosling in. Yeah, no, I'm pretty proud of that accomplishment. But yeah, you can see how his role in this is somewhat different from the Believer. And I appreciate that he does not feel too much like just Ford Light. He's not too Descartian. The you know, yeah, both are reserved, tough, snarky, cynical, dislike the job, but still do it, but yeah, they're, they're distinct enough, and he can be really indecisive, dude, it's time to sit or take away the pot, and he's not looking for adventure, he's just looking for a place to rest his head, and Decker's been hiding out, he shot a clown, I think that isn't related, I don't know, he was not retired, 
I watched him in Star Wars, one of the Indiana Jones movies, I think maybe the Temple of Doom one, Frantic, both of his Jack Ryan films, and the other two pre-Chris Pine one. I might at some point watch the Chris Pine one, I don't really have a problem with him, though I admit I used to, in part for the whole J.J. Star Trek thing. The Fugitive, Air Force One, Firewall, Cowboys and Aliens, and The Expendables 3. This is the first time I watch Ana de Armas as a, in anything. You know, the, the clips and trailers of Knock Knock do make an impression for how obnoxious she seems, but isn't everyone one directed by Eli Roth? And, you know, this time one of the girls in these ads that uh, are very much objectifying women and appealing only to men is now an actual character and yeah, she. I. I. I absolutely love what. Uh, what they did with the character. I. I can't say enough good about that. And. Jared Leto is Nando Wallace, replicant manufacturer. Amazing job. Robin Wright is Lieutenant Joshi. I've seen her in Unbreakable, the Pledge, Beowulf, Christmas Carol, the Girl with Dragon Tattoo, and Wonder Woman. She does great. Sil Sylvia Hawks, if that's how you pronounce it, as low, great job. Mackenzie Davis is Mariette, Batista and Sabra Morton. Yeah, great job. And Edward Jason almost is back in, you know, almost blinking, you almost some cameo. And yes, he does do origami. And that is it for the. What do you know? I did in almost half the time this time. So, we are moving on to thoughts. Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. And this is when I really let loose. Now, notes taken while watching. I already mentioned that the movie is 2 hours and 33 minutes, I believe, not counting the end credits. Now, the, the opening with the, you know, Nexus 8 with open-ended lifespans. You know, I think part part of the idea is, oh, maybe Descartes is a replicant because in the first one, you know, he might be a replicant. In which case, he must have the four-year lifespan because that's what they say is limited to in the first movie. And now he's back after all these years. So yeah, it's open-ended lifespans. Even though the first movie, at, at first they just say, oh, we you know we did that because the otherwise they develop emotions and become really hard to control, but then when Batty is, you know, going all Batty, and he's with Tyrell, who clearly idolizes him, and he really comes off as he, he wanted to help, and he he's clearly frustrated with, all the, yes, I tried that, I tried that, it doesn't work, you know, so, yeah, if, if there's, it's a complete retcon to think that Deckard could be a replicant with more than a four-year lifespan, and then you have all these others who clearly coexisted with Rachel. So, I, I mean, is the idea supposed to be that after they lost another replicant, who you know, Rachel, and the the best Blade Runner, and we don't know how you know Dave Holden if he'll recover. After that, they're just like, you know what? Screw the four-year lifespan. So what? It it wasn't even what that wasn't enough to keep us safe. Let's make them have much longer lifespans instead. And they built a bunch, a bunch of those rebelled, and then caught up with Deckard and Rachel and formed this whole resist. I'm sorry, it's it's a retcon, but without the retcon, you have no movie. I really appreciate that one of the first images is the close-up of an eye, like the original, and the text exposition at the start really is incredibly necessary to explain how the world is now different from the first one. 
and like they mentioned in the midnight screenings episode which I recommend and don't watch just don't watch it if you haven't already watched the movie but if you're watching this segment of this video you really shouldn't be watching it if you haven't already watched the movie but yeah you know I agree with a lot of what they say including that the you know it, it builds really beautifully on the first movie you know huge scope and visuals from right away I'm seeing all these flat you know nondescript rooftops and how tight the buildings are in the first one you see how tight how cramped it is to be in you know in public walking on the sidewalk and such in this you see how close the the you know apartments are more so than the first I like the element of the boiling pot and you know, it in part reminded me of Scream, and it was good how it kept cutting back and forth, you know, and, and it reminded me of the boiling eggs in the first one. So yeah. Is this me or was there a slight big daddy thing to Dave Batista before he took off the, the suit? And you know, the the first scene is basically Kay doing his you know his standard thing. Here's a replicant who escaped. I'd like to arrest him, but he resists, so I have to retire him. You know. A lot of movies have that kind of scene, and it's good because it sets up the protagonist. You see what he does, how he does it, how he feels about what he does. But in this movie, and a lot of other movies really should follow this, the example, and this isn't the first movie to do it. Here it actually also starts off the plot really beautifully. And at first it doesn't even necessarily look like it's going to be that much of a... And you know you you see K fighting really well against replicants, which whether or not Deckard is in the original replicant, he does not do a good job fighting. If you know you're going up against these, you know, the, these individuals who are stronger than human beings, do something to prepare yourself for that. And they mentioned that in the midnight screening of of the original. I think that he's always getting his ass kicked. And, you know, K is a replicant, we're told almost immediately, although I don't think you should know going in, and the trailers didn't tell me. You know, he's a replicant, he's basically comfortable with it, with it and retiring his own kind, but he's also constantly facing the harassment from other people, including superiors and colleagues. And, you know, it starts with a handful of loose replicants, like, you know, Maybe the movie will be like the first one. I'm really glad it isn't. And this, you know, very decorative type is going to hunt down a handful of replicants, and that'll be the plot. And then, you know, later in the movie, they do become incredibly use, you know, important to the plot. Now, I really like how the this whole. You know, K is a cop. You know, there's gathering evidence. There's calling his boss and telling her, you know, so I did this, and it kind of led to, to that. And yeah, it feels like he's he's a cop, and he does his job. You know, he goes to the his cop car and radios his boss and gets new orders and and such. I I really like that it, it was not boring, but it gets across that his job can be boring. And that again, I'm not saying the first one should have, but the first one didn't really. You know, the first one, it's kind of this, you know, Sam Spade detective kind of thing, and, and it mixed this cowboy kind of thing, western kind of thing. And, you know, both very intentional and really beautifully done. But in this, yeah, you know, even in the future, being a cop, even hunting down these badasses who can throw you through a wall. Yeah, there's still this long, you know, you have to put in all this time and effort to do things that don't always pan out and such. And I also really like the fight against Dave Batista that it did actually have this, you know, in the trailer it looks like he just immediately throws him through the wall. I really like that he keeps he keeps smashing into the wall because yes he's incredibly strong but it's still a wall you know it's not paper mache. I really really love the whole the whole ritual test man mantra thing of you know cells interlinked with this kind of you know we depend on each other 
if you go against us, you will hurt yourself and others you might care about as well. You will not just be hurting us. Because that was the problem that they had with the older replicants. They go against us and we can't have that. So they have this really dehumanizing and like inhuman, like if, if, you know, imagine if like you were getting like a test with like a psychiatrist and they were in the, and, and you couldn't see their face. You could only see this like robot slit kind of thing. And they were constantly just barking these things at you and you had to respond and do it exactly right. Just, it, you know, this is not something that they would do to a person they thought highly of. Maybe they would do it to human beings, although I don't really think so. But they def they wouldn't put walls through this, you know. And we, of course, have some product placement, Sony, they also put that in midnight screenings. And, you know, the the... Yeah, people are constantly, you know, people know that K is a replicant. And they're constantly spewing hate at him for it. You know, they, they wrote graffiti on his door. And there's this, I would say, almost definitely a criminal who's walking out of the police station. And he barks skin job at a cop. You know, that's that's how comfortable people are with that. And, and K doesn't do anything. And I, I really love that, you know, when, you know, he, he comes home and he's like, oh, hi, honey, dinner's almost ready. And he's like, oh, that's, that's great. What a day, huh? Oh, it was a day. And he's, you know, and at first you just think, oh, the wife is just off screen. And she's, you know, and then you see, oh, it's a hologram. And then you see, you know, and I, this is definitely happening in the future when people are not going to get to eat what they want, but they will eat what is at all available, you know. So on top of this really un unappealing meal, she puts this steak that looks delicious, you know, and just, yeah. And I love how at first, she comes off as a Stepford wife. You know, at, at first, it's just, oh, she's in a good mood. That's great. But then you realize it's an AI. And then you kind of, you know, you're hearing his, wow, this is, this is, this is kind of creepy. She's, she's eerily perfect and such. And then, you know, occasionally, and we'll slip these little things where it's clear that she's not just spouting this kind of standard stuff. No, she actually is relating to him. And I really appreciate, I mean, I would not have thought that, you know, doing basically the MH from Voyager, doing that again would be really compelling because that show does so amazing with it. And obviously this is not going to be able to outdo that in such a short space of time. But every moment spent with her in this is compelling. There are little neat details and some where you don't necessarily at first immediately think something much of it you know sometimes she's almost just there in the scene but then you actually realize oh there's this you know this is this other thing going on and it's just yeah it because under you know but but yeah you know with the with the emanator with the technology letting go oh, everywhere you know it's hologram but yeah, you know, when, when they're flying in the car and she's like, you know, just talking calmly about the war. You know, Ryan, I've also just rewatched Night and Day. It's, it's this very calm, I know we're in a stressful situation, but there's no reason for you to get upset. You know, kind of, not, not patronizing, but just trying to keep them from freaking out kind of thing because she's programmed to be this perfect you know so obviously it's not going to be like oh be careful what are you doing just you know because yeah that would really bother him but there's still this clear like just almost like scratching you know clawing to to get out and say please be careful i don't want you to get hurt and then when when the power goes out and she disappears and just 
imagine how horrifying that would be. And again, Voyager did this, but just suddenly you just disappear and then you come back and time has passed and you you get that you were gone but you don't really know what happened and just must be so awful and I mean to to an extent you know there's there's an analog to that in the real world of like you know comas and and people experiencing blackouts and such but I I you know I don't feel like this was exploitative of that. And yeah, it brings up, you know, okay, the, in, in this and the first one, like, are replicants human? And this adds, are holograms human? She clearly has AI. She's not just doing everything that he asks her to. You know, it's not, you know, the, the, the sixth sense has this perfect, you know, and, and you know, perfect partner, perfect romantic, female romantic partner kind of thing, and there's nothing there, it's just, oh, would you like a beer? Oh, let me just strip for her and give you a lap dance. There's nothing there, but here there's clearly a mind. She can feel and sense things. I love them going out on the, you know, she feels rain for the first time because she doesn't get to, she's always stuck inside because that's where the hologram emitter is, you know, and she it's the first time she gets to feel rain on her skin, and again, at that point, how is she not a human being? She can clearly feel things, and and yet there's still this kind of blurring of sometimes they can kind of hold hands, sometimes it passes through. It doesn't give him anything except to see her happy for them to be out in the rain. He's out in the rain all day. It doesn't, he hates the rain, he doesn't want to be in the rain, but bringing her out there, it means the world to her, and seeing her like that is just amazing. And and then you have the, this, this thing of, you know, he gets a call from the, you know, from, from Joshi, and immediately it cuts away the, the hologram of joy, and it is this, like, they didn't have to make it like that with the tech in the movie because there's some incredibly futuristic tech also, but, and, and there's also, there are aspects of that, of the hologram that are, you know, futuristic. So, no, it's, it's legitimately that this tiny bit of happiness and this kind of sense of, of, you know, this, this escape from the loneliness and it's taken away from him when when the real world barges back into his life and and the the you know i i you know the the happy with you and you you don't have to say that and, you know in 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 way she's almost just like a maid but clearly both of them want her to be more but it's struggling against the she's she's supposed to just be that you know and I'm I'm gonna get more into that later and you know get into the Batista the the kind of urn thing and you know a pregnant replicant which was apparently also in at least one of the books so you know they didn't make it up for the movie but it still it really does completely change everything. And yeah, you know, there's that point, you know, when if if you're born, you have a soul, at least in my mind. And you know, the you know, are you refusing? I didn't realize that was an option. You've gone, you've gotten along fine without a soul. And you know, some people are gonna say, oh, how could you? Do? No one would actually say that to someone. Some people do. You know, some people do say that to people they work with and who work for them, you know, say directly to them, you know, ah, oh, man, it's, I would like you so much more if you weren't this ethnicity or religion or gender or gender identity, you know, that actually happens. People who just don't, and it's showing that 30 years later, they're still, they're right there. They're on earth and they're working, they're doing what they're supposed to. They're blade running, they're, they're working as sex workers, you know, the replicants are among them, and they're still being treated as second-class citizens. If not for competent blade runners, there might still be, I mean, imagine the first movie if 
the Deckard hadn't been there, you know, there would have been more the the well, let's see. Well, yeah, you know, certainly he, he stops Leon and you know Zola wasn't really doing anything to anyone, and that's also again part of the point. But yeah, Leon would probably have killed more people and possibly Batty as well, and possibly even Pris. If not, I mean, they kill people they don't have to. There is no reason to kill Terrell other than like anger over having been created with too short of a lifespan. And, you know, I'd, I'd say this is more overtly about classism than the first one. Yeah, I feel it, buddy. Don't know if the, the microphone on the camera will catch that, but there is a dog barking. And, you know, the, the element of this, you know, there was the blackout, and then all data was erased. At first, it just seems like, oh, well, you know, I guess that furthers the mystery that... You know, if they didn't have that, it would be like, well, why didn't you just get the data? And yeah, there's the black guy. And at first, it just, yeah, okay, it works for that. And there's that point, everything was on hard drives. You know, we lost everything. And that's true. I mean, imagine if today if all the internet all over the world just died and was off for days. Imagine how crippled the world, you know, that would be, I, I don't know what they did in the, the remake of The World Stood Still, The Day the World Stood Still, but in the original, I think it was all the cars that refused to drive or something like that. Back then, back in the 50s, that would have stopped the world. Today, cut the internet from the entire world, and there you go. But then, you know, later on, we find that it really, it affected everyone, and yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, there's something about uh, the older models of replicants. And, yeah, you know, replicants are around, not all of them are retirees. And the birthing scene, it really, it's like a baby, you know, moving erratically and the, the goop and the complete disorientation and you know you see the the little drone things that allow Neander to see which is of course also you know there will be something along those lines you know at first it'll be more like Geordi's visor but yeah you know the first time I you know I was gonna watch TNG with my you know then fiance now ex fiance you know, I immediately asked, can he, like, shoot lasers out of that? And that was also the first thing I asked right before I first watched RoboCop. And both times I was like, okay. Would have been cool, though. And the... Yeah, the, you know, with Neander, oh, we've conquered nine worlds. We should own all the stars, you know. It's, it's, this, it's megalomania, and really, he can't... It's just, it's never going to be enough for him. He, he will always, you know, it's like that thing, you know, Raven says to, to Eric in uh, Days of Future Past, you know, one life was never enough for you. And, you know, he talks about, you know, you should have millions of replicants. And, you know, Storm Eden, which is, yeah, nicely evocative. And, yeah, it's pointed out, you know, if replicants could procreate, they would no longer be slaves they would you know and and yeah that is a thing that you know the as it is replicants you know before the ending of this film which i do think is it's slightly ambiguous but i do think it's going to lead to freedom for replicants before that they are ultimately dependent on their masters because they can't live without them but they don't have a future without their masters, but if you can raise a family, you know, they, we already know they can work. They can work without being treated as slave labor, but what are they going to do if they leave, you know, 40 acres and a mule? Well, what now? You know, but 
family means future and yeah then it's just you know settle down somewhere and then you know and and then the world of of Blade Runner will have to accept I guess humans are gonna have to do it and we could hope that maybe that means well in that case we have to raise you know we have to get a fair minimum wage <clears throat> or people won't work and yeah but I appreciate that yeah you it's entirely possible that it's not gonna happen but nevertheless at least replicants get freedom which is I mean they they have, they are the most abused and you know you have the this thing of K might be the son of Ford and Rachel and you know this thing I really love this reversal K thinks that his memories aren't real but they are or at least maybe not his and and at the end of the movie we know for sure that they're not his memories but still this because you believe your memories are real because I mean they they're your memories what of course they're not implant what a silly thing to say I know that I obviously I lived through these things why else would I have memories of them that's our brain tells us that our memories and that's actually some people rely way too much on their memory and that's also she points out in in this movie people think that it's about details it's not it's about emotions and that's exactly right it's not about what actually happened it's about what how you felt because it happened and yeah you know you you think that your memories are yours because that's what your brain tells you if you've been told your whole life that your brain telling you that your memories are your own that that's wrong then you accept that eventually but then what if there's evidence that they are actually real it's yeah very i i love that reversal and I believe Philip K. Dick would have as well. And you know, you have the horse thing and the 61021, I think it was K, which might be K's birthday, and 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 you know, K the replicant has shared sympathy with Joy the AI, and it's this thing of both of them have been told from the moment they were they came into existence you're not good enough you are not human and you will never be human and no matter what you do you do what we tell you to do if you if you assert yourself if you start to show any independence we you are gone you, you know k gets suspended and joy i mean who's going to accept a hologram, a pleasure hologram that doesn't do exactly what the owner wants them to. Just forget it. We're gonna we're gonna dismantle you. We're gonna you know take you apart, put you back together. You're not gonna be you at that point, and you're not gonna have even a little bit of room to develop a you. You're you're gonna be what your owner wants you to be at any time. You're not gonna get to have any independent thought and just. It's it's such a brilliant and and at the same time there's also this thing of if you're constantly told you're not good enough if you can't love yourself you can't love somebody else not truly it it has to start with you loving yourself and neither of them quite do because yeah they can't for the reason I just described and yeah they just they they both have to have a certain at the end of the day she has to accept that he is kind of he is my owner he is my boss I can't we'll never will never be equals and he has this feeling of I can't if I show emotion I'm one of the defect replicants and they'll yeah suspend me and you know the the kind of waterfall things just stunning looking you know Rachel level stunning looking and you know them driving through the rain I love how this scene conveys that 2k this is nothing this is so what I drive through the rain all the time to us it looks impressive and obviously also you know Joy is incredibly excited to get to leave the house and now she's not just right outside the house now she's actually going out and 
you know, San Diego's a garbage district in the movie too. Yeah, I'm kidding. Much love. And, you know, this thing that there are, you know, prostitute replicants and some of them are just willing to, maybe not necessarily assassinate, but spy for, you know, for, for love. But what wouldn't we do for love? Do anything just for love. And, yeah, the, the thing with, you know, the the hollow and flashing out and you know and she gets scared and so did I I was like oh no is she is he gonna be able to, get, to turn her back on is is what just happened to her and and again think of think of how horrifying that must be that just a flicker of electricity and suddenly she's gone just yeah and and I get, we take it for granted. We take for granted. I'm not gonna die the next moment from nothing, you know, unless I live in America and there's a gun nut nearby. You know, we don't think of life like that because we can stand to. And she, I mean, on some level, she maybe does. She she's not stupid. She's well aware of her situation. That's why she takes such joy in being allowed out of the house so yeah tempered that that is tempered with the the notion that any moment there could you know and if she's just at home what if there's another blackout she might be off for 10 days she might lose 10 days and be like what what even happened it's just yeah and let's see you know them them like cutting open the the door of the car really reminded me of Captain America 2 with Nick Fury and you know then you have the brief action scene again the action scenes are really great I kinda hope that someone does like maybe for the DVD or something you know not necessarily free online but just you know just a quick cut of just the action scenes because the action scenes are really really awesome with without exception none of them feel gratuitous or repetitive each has at least a slightly different setup and you know he fights and beats off <laughs> sorry he fights them off really just fantastically done and then the bombs start dropping and we see you know you know, love is aiming while receiving a manicure. It's very, very Trump sitting there eating cake, you know. And then she said, you know, what are you doing? Get up, find the child. And yeah, for a little bit there, you thought that she was trying to kill him. And just, yeah. And... And you know the the child labor again. In in the first one, we don't know what really happens to to children, and and yeah, in this, it's just it's completely straightforward. Yeah, some of them are slaves, and yeah, again, it's, and and he's even like, which which do you want to buy? It's it's not even, you know he blows the whistle. All of them get up. They know what's about to happen. They know that this is an auction. They know that the you know, uh, auction. They know that they're about to be sold, and you know, on some what what's what's going through their mind? Maybe he'll treat me better, or I don't know anybody else. Everyone I know is in this building. I'm gonna be so lonely, you know. But there's no they they get up and and you know you have the one who drops the thing and and like freezes and everyone around. Like, oh no, what's he gonna do? And. You really, it's completely clear, if Kay wasn't there, he would brutally punish that child. You know, it's just because if Kay sees that, he might be put off from buying a child. You know, it's, it's very much, it's still a very brutal world, the, you know, the, in the Blade Runner universe. It, it is in the first one. And, and you know, with, with Joy, I love that they named her Joy, because, I mean, they could have named her, like, Pleasure, or, you know, yeah, but they named her Joy, and that's because, at the end of the day, in the world of Blade Runner, there is no joy, it's a fantasy, it's, it's, it's pretend, 
It's a commodity. It's something you buy. There's, there's no, yeah, it's, it's, it's not real. And on, again, on some level, K does know that. He's not stupid. And, you know, and the thing, you know, is the horse really still there after all these years? And, yeah, it's, you know, you know, it's, it's that thing of, you know, I love wooden horses. I age, but, you know, I get older, they, it stays the same age. And, and, you know, you have the, the thing of, you know, you should have a name, maybe Joe. And, you know, it gets biblical again because Joseph, who freed the slave, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, the IMDb trivia explains it better than I, yeah. And, let's see. And, and the, you know, you see this huge nature thing and, Oh, I was just like toying with this little hologram of an animal, and then we see the whole nature thing was the you know she was filling with only part of the hologram, but the whole nature thing was the um, and and she said you know oh I'm I'm I have all the freedom in the world as long as I stay in this class and just yeah I'm sorry that that really freaking got me and almost made me cry. And, and, yeah, you know, you have that thing of this, yeah, she explains the, you know, it's emotion, not detail, and, you know, she said, you know, I, I create memories from, I, I, you know, provide a stable product, you know, of a fantasy and the, you know, some something to think back on and smile about, and, and and yeah, I've sort of almost said some of this, but you know, Joy, you know, she's submissive a lot of the time, very calm and sweet, and then suddenly she'll worry. And it's it's scary to us because it's it hits so much harder than when a character is like constantly afraid. And you know, that thing, you know, I I know you liked her and this, I want to be real for you. You are, you know, and and this and and you know the the body match and the the sink and it's this, just. It's it's a scene that's so messed up and it's so beautiful and it's just. And and really, you know, again for for real life analog. You know, if if. If a man's wife is in a coma, maybe she's disabled, maybe she just doesn't really have much of a sex drive for for one reason or another. And yeah, I mean, they, it might not be lived out, but on some level, there's sexual frustration. There might be sexual. There's very likely to be sexual frustration, and he'll realize that he can't do it with her. But the, the, both of them kind of want, and maybe they'll even be able to talk about it, although very likely not. But, yeah, you know, and it, it's not that he, he doesn't want to cheat on her, but he, you know, it's it's natural to want sex, especially with a partner that you care really deeply about. And if you can't with that partner, it's, just, yeah. And, let's see. And yeah, you know, it, you know, I, I, it's not often that a sex scene almost makes me cry. And, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's confusing for the people involved. And just, yeah.
I really like, you know, the first one has several dif different ethnicities and languages, and this one adds to that with the with the African, got some Russian and more Asian, you know, really good culture mix. You know, love, you know, Nander's right hand has something of Elizabeth Salander thing going on, and you know. In some ways, she's very much a female version of, you know, Roy Batty. It's it's this thing of just, yeah. You know, she has a a completely unnecessary cruelty, and you know, kind of yeah. She's she's sadistic as a lot of bad guys are, but at the same time, she also sometimes cries, and yeah, it's, it's these are complex villains. And the movie's sometimes very loud. And, you know, the, the movie again has this thing of, you know, real live animals are very rare, which is also, you know, hinted, it's hinted at in the first one. I, I feel like it's maybe clearer in this one. You know, Harrison Ford only shows up an hour and 45 minutes into this movie. That actually means he's only in the movie for maybe 48 minutes and he's not always he doesn't have screen time you know constantly in yeah and you know he set up proximity mines and he's shooting at K and and the you know the hologram of, of Elvis and Marilyn Monroe no Tupac and it's this creepy, almost like kind of Silent Hill. You know, part of what makes, part of what we love about live music is that they're they're there. It's a real person, and they're right there. And this creepy kind of can be played a million times, and they'll never know you're there because it's simple technology. It's just recreating music, and it goes on and off, and and kind of you know. And and this kind of flashing in an action scene—it's just it—it's so beautifully staged to have this kind of flashing of these neon lights, and and suddenly there's the dancing girls and the yeah, just I mean at the at the end of the day, if you ignore the way it's shot and if you took away the the setting and this flickering of it's a fist fight it's two guys punching each other you know that's that's what it is but he makes it interesting you know and that's that's how you do this kind of thing that's how you do action we've seen so many of these things before so yeah and you know and and in the the Elvis thing again you know Almost made me cry. Let's see. And you know, the the dog which you know which which doesn't attack and is cute and yeah. And you know, he starts asking questions, and maybe you married the wrong one. Maybe you should watch your mouth. And you know, this the dog is is it real? Is it mechanical? Ask him. And you know, pouring scotch on the floor and then it runs up and licks it off in the yeah. And and you know that thing, you know, sometimes to love someone you have to be a stranger to them and yeah, you, tell, you know, it breaks his heart, but it's, yeah. And, let's see. And Joyce final fate there with, you know, I love you, and then crunch, and just, and there's no, love doesn't gain anything by that, it's, it's, she's already leaving him to die, why not leave him, 
with joy just for that last little bit. But no, she even takes that away. And, you know, and Joe's found by the, you know, the, the, well, the you know, prostitute replicants and such, and it's, you know, and, and when we saw her put the tracking device, because of course it was a tracking device, we thought that she was maybe still working for the, you know, because, I mean, obviously she still wants to track him for, for love, but, you know, because we saw her be hired earlier, but no, she was working with the Resistance, who we barely knew existed, but we knew there were replicants out there who had gone rogue and were in hiding. So it's it's really, really done. And, you know, with, with K back in the city, you know, he sees Joy the, the ad. And it's not the first time we see Joy the ad, I'm pretty sure. Or am I think? Anyway, whether or not we do, suddenly she's purely sexualized. You know, the, the, you see the car fly by, and right there, her naked ass, her legs, and, you know, she, she bends over to, to have, like, eye contact with him and to look ex especially sexual, you know, her breasts. And, and you see these, these horrible, empty eyes, and this is the first time she's sexualized in a way that feels like it, it's, it's gratuitous. And it's not gratuitous in the film, it's gratuitous in the world. This is, this is an ad meant to sell a product to men. That's it. There's no, this woman has no agency. She doesn't, there's no room for personality. She's, this is not the AI one, this is just an ad. And yet, there are elements of the AI in there. And at the end of the day, you have to wonder, when, when she said, what a day, it is just, was that just the programming? Was that not even her relating? Because at the end of the day, how much was her and how, we know some of the things were her, but maybe a lot of it just wasn't, and maybe a lot of what he actually loved about her, he had forgotten that was in the ad. That's not for me, that's just standard, you know. And, and yeah, you know, she's, there's, there's no personal relationship there. It's just, it's just there for, for the attraction. And it's, you know, she's, she's easy to replace. It's, it's not special. It's not, it's, yeah. And, You know, and, and that thing of, you know, the Freedom Fighters tell you know, you must kill four to keep the baby safe. And let's see. And the, the thing of, you know, no, 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 it was a girl. You know, I, I told you, I scrambled, I made sure to hide. You know, it's, it's not the first movie to do that twist, but it worked. You know, we were thinking, oh, it must be Joe. You know, it, it all seems to fit. And, you know, young boy, but then, yeah. If, if they spend all that time looking for a man, not a woman, then it didn't even occur, it didn't occur to me at least, that it was, you know, the, the woman making memories, that she was the one. We didn't even think that she might be a replicant. I mean, she said she's human, but she has a, this illness that, yeah. And, you know, she said, we all wish it was us. We, you know, we want you know, to believe, uh, yeah, and, you know, I actually, I care about a death scene, which often, you know, they're so cliche, and, you know, the, the, you know, we have the return to the, the girl in the glass bubble, and, you know, and, and Wallace said, you know, he, maybe you were designed spe specifically so you would be attracted to Rachel, so you would get together if you were, you know, and that's the thing of, you know, maybe he is a replicant, maybe he isn't. And I don't know exactly, I, I mean, apparently, 
at least to some extent, it is her, it, it is actually, I cannot believe I'm blanking on her name right now. But, but yeah, you know, I mean, I, I love the, the actress and she's stunning in the first one. There's a little bit of uncanny valley with the face, but we are getting there. And it's apparently much better than some other recent examples that, yeah. And the, yeah, you know, the ad, the, you know, hello, handsome, and you look like a good Joe. And it's that thing of, was that something that she just chose to hang on to as the AI? Or was it just, was it the ad? Because at the end of the day, if, if you're conditioned to behave a certain way and, you know, be punished for not behaving that way, you know, sometimes you might even yourself forget, was, was, that, was that me? Where did that come from? Or is that just something they told me to do? And it's so internalized. And, yeah. And, and it is that thing of, yeah, you can you can read it either way. I would say maybe maybe it's not meant to be ambiguous, but I do think that you know you can read it either way. And you know the the you have the the cars flying and you know the the. Yeah, the, them, them shooting, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, quite, quite good, and, you know, this really belongs in the non-spoiler, but anyway, you know, there was, you know, people say it's too long, there wasn't a second in this where I was like, oh, it's just, I'm so tired, and I slept four hours last night, yeah, I know, I tried to catch back up, but, and I was like, maybe I should move it a day, Maybe I'll sleep even less tomorrow night, and yeah. And yeah, I didn't have any trouble. You know, I was never even really remotely close to falling asleep in the, yeah. And I like the martial arts fight outside the car. And again, you have, you have this new element of all this water, and they're trying to drown each other, and Harrison Ford's almost drowning, and yeah. And it's just the war, it, the rain is pouring down like crazy. And, you know, at the end of the day, Neander and the Freedom Fighters both want the, the you know, the, the child who was, the replicant who was born, so they can find out how to make sure that other replicants can also give birth. And Neander wants it, so, you know, he, he, He's basically gonna take her apart. You know, he cut open the stomach of that other one right after she was born. As he's talking, he's like being soothing, and, and all that. he cuts her open because man, you can't you can't give birth. You're you're not of use to me. And yeah, he might cut open this girl, and he's just he's just gonna find out how to you know. He wants to know so that he can build an army. You know. The freedom fighters are like we just don't want to be slaves anymore, and it's this thing of, it's it's so beautifully illustrates just it's it's empathy and morality or the lack of in the case of Neander, and yeah, it's, like, it's different people looking at the same exact thing can have such completely different, and and really it underlines he is a dictator, he is a monster, he sees individuals and he tries to exploit them where the freedom fighters see fellow individuals and they you know they they say for one of us to choose to sacrifice themselves for the cause it's the most human thing to do and we have to rescue this one so that we can all cease to be slaves you know both of them are comfortable with sacrifice of replicants but neander sacrifices because they you know they they're no longer useful to him whereas they sacrifice intentionally to further their very just cause 
any of the three games. And really, Neander does not have a lot of screen time, but he makes a, you know, a mark. And really, the, the, let's see. Yeah, and you know when when love kills joy. I mean, in some ways, she they're in the same situation. They're both hated by a lot of people, thought very little of, and yeah, when when she has when love has the chance, she destroys joy, and joy joy doesn't even like so many people. Within that situation, scream like, "What are you doing? How can you do?" Joy, you know, in her dying moments, there's there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any penalty after this. There's not she can be herself, she can express exactly what she thinks, exactly what she wants to, and immediately with no hesitation, it's I love you. You know, that's that's freaking beautiful. And you know, the, the mystery room that keeps you guessing, I might have said that earlier. And, you know, and, and he lies dying there in the snow, the K does. And, you know, with the snow, you have the, the symbolism of, like, purity. Something new will come. Change is coming. You know, the, the world that he was a part of is going to change. It is going to decay just as he is right there. And, you know, the, there will be room for the unique and, you know, we end with Ford meeting his kid. And, and just, I love that that's exactly what, you know, he walks up and just, you know, we've, we've already had scenes in the movie of someone meeting someone that they were like, I thought I lost you and I couldn't. And just, yeah, to, to have it end just like that. I, I really, I, I love that. And and I really love that we never see another person's custom joy. We only see, you know, she she acts towards other people, she interacts, but we we only ever see Kay's joy, and then later we after that joy is gone you know I mean even if he buys another one it's not gonna be the same you know it's just I mean at that point it might almost be kind of sick to try to rebuild something like that with an individual that used to be but yeah and then there at the end we see her with there's no pretense because this joy isn't for him it's for all men to consume it's for men to pass by in the street and catch, oh, it's called joy, and it's water, great, I'll go home, I'll order it immediately. You know, it's, yeah, it's beautifully. And and we ourselves forgot, I mean, we knew, we we knew that, that this was not, you know, we, we, yeah, we knew that this, she was, she was a product. This was his copy of that product. But to us, she became a human being. And, that's the point, you know, it, if, if you let this person be human, they will be, you know, if, if you really give them room to be a human being, they will be, and then there at the end, it's this thing, I mean, that's, there's no room for joy, and there's no room for joy and K to be together in this world, not with someone like Love having so much freedom. I mean, she goes in, she steals the bones, then she goes, she kills a police lieutenant, and she's not even like, you know, she didn't have to tell her, I will get away with this, but she did, because she's sadistic. She, on, on some level, she gets off on this. She kisses Kay as she thinks he's dying, you know, and yeah, she kills him, you know, I'm just gonna say that you shot, and I had to get, you know, and then she picks up her head, holds it for the scanner and, you know, just lets her go and bumps against the, you know, and this is, again, this could so easily come off as comical, but it just, it's, it's so dark and disturbing, and it's like, this is not, 
she is love is not human and the reason she is or a lot of you know she's barely human and the reason for that is that she has given up her humanity because she's not in the same situation as Kay. She has a lot more influence and freedom and she's not going to lose her job by being more human. And, you know, we have some what ambiguous and, you know, will, you know, resistance get the, the ground the glass bubble? I would say that probably is how it ends up. And again, maybe it's not ambiguous, maybe I'm just a dumbass. But, you know, will they get their freedom? Will Ford join them? You know, I, I will say that, you know, Joe will die in, in the snow. You know, and this is again, you know, there's obvious, you know, I already went into the, the symbolism of the snow, and obviously he did that intentionally. You know, he, yes, he was going to die either way, but if he was, like, thinking comfort, he's not going to lie there and freeze to death. You know, they have guns. You know, he's fully, you know, he, he can self-terminate. So there's no, no, he, he lies down there for the symbolism and, yeah. And and you know, on some level, love respects definitely Neander, but she also has a fear of him and a hatred of him. I would say, and the reason she's so brutal is because he's so brutal. You know lives, pain, anything of other people do not matter to them, only what they can take from them. You know, he creates, he says, I can only create so many replicants. He's not saying that, you know, it's, it's a huge responsibility to create replicants. I have to make sure that they, that they have some chance at being happy, at feeling, at enjoying life. No, he's saying, I can only make so many and that makes it hard for me to abuse them as much as I want to. That, that means I can't build an army yet. And I resent that. And like with Mother, I filled up most of the notepad. Maybe I need to start bringing two notepads or something. And I forget there's probably some good stuff in the what we can find. Plot. And, you know, and, and we have revealed that a lot of Kay's reality is a lie, which is very Philip K. Dick, you know, seen his. So we'll recall the Matrix, which was heavily inspired by Dick, a scanner darkly, the adjustment bureaus, and tons of his written work. And we don't see the off colonies, but we almost, you know, they almost travel there. And really, there wouldn't have been room for it in the movie, I would say. I, I guess if they make a third one, they could. I don't especially think that a third one, I think this one does what it, yeah. And, you know, I, I do really appreciate that we visit all these other areas than only Los Angeles, California. And... And that was it. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved this movie. And I mean, to each his own. But if you didn't, I don't know what you're smoking, but you may want to cut back on it.